Jen. <laughs> Live. We're in We're Star live. Trek. We're live. Yay! Good morning, everybody. Lovely to be here. Uh, beautiful beings of light. I've got my phone right here in front of me, like I do every Sunday morning, uh, to welcome you into our sacred sanctuary here. And I do that by finding you here on our Brentwood Inspired Living Center page. And um, seeing us live, there we are. And then I get to see your faces um, on your profile pictures as you log in and leave us comments. So leave us a comment when you when you get in here with us, when you log into the, the Facebook Live, then I'll know that you're here. I get to connect with you this way. And um, yay, there we are. We are live. It's always nice to see. Let us know that you can see us and hear us because that's really important to the success of our <laughs> Sunday morning show here. Uh, I so feel so, so blessed to be here for another spectacular Sunday with everybody. Um, so I'll be having my phone right here. I'm looking down to check in to see who's tuning in and connecting in with us this morning. You have joined us here at Brentwood Inspired Living Center. This is our Sunday gathering. We meet here on Facebook Live at 10 a.m. Pacific time. I am in South Carolina at the moment, so it is 1 p.m. here. Um, so I've been up since like three or four year time, something like that. <laughs> you get a lot done. If you're, if yes. you're working in California and you're in on the East Coast, you get a lot done by, by 8 a.m. <laughs> yeah. uh, welcome, everybody. Welcome into our community where our purpose is to be a safe environment for everyone to recognize their true essential nature, the essence that we might call uh, beingness or divinity or higher holy self, that place where we create um, and where infinite possibilities dwell. Our theme for December is possibilities, possibilities. And one of my favorite quotes of all time uh, comes from Emily Dickinson. And well, I, I have my bachelor's degree in English literature. So I actually have many favorite Emily Dickinson quotes, but this one, uh, it really speaks to our theme. I dwell in possibility. Mm -hmm. Don't you just love that? Allow yourself to sit with that concept. I dwell in possibility. Good morning, beloveds. Good morning, Nancy. There's everybody. Sometimes my phone has a lag and it probably might today a little bit in the hotel room, um, especially if uh, a lot of people in the hotel are <laughs> using the Wi-Fi. But now I see you. Good morning, Florence and John and Ginny. Uh, she says, good cold Sunday morning in Antioch. Is it cold there? Yes. Yes, yes very cool. cold today, huh? Good morning, Nancy. Good morning, John. Thank you, Florence. Florence says everything sounds good, clear. Jan says, welcome, everyone. Wonderful to have Fred back. Yay, to have Lori with us. How fortunate we are to have Amy, Pat, Lori, Fred at Brentwood Inspire Living Center. Yes, thank you. And you, Jan, we're so fortunate to have you. And John says, hi, Fred. <laughs> <laughs> John, Shin. Um, it was 35 this morning, Jenny says. Wow, it is a little chilly there. I actually don't know what temperature is out here in um, South Carolina right now, but it's a little chilly, but not too bad. Not too bad for being on the East Coast. So here we are. Thank you for tuning in with us. Um, I have the honor of being in loving service um, as a spiritual director of this exceptional community where we get to uh, share with the world the love, the inspiration, the joy that is cultivated here. My name is Amy Van Ling, and it is my, my joy to be here. If you are new here, please feel free to reach out to me, our board president, Jan, or any of our board members. Uh, we love to connect with you. Our email addresses and our contact uh, can be found on our website, BrentwoodILC.org. So as always, I will keep this phone right here where I can see you logging in with us and I'll be peeking down there to check in with you and read your messages and see your beautiful faces. Um, I am thrilled to be here this morning with Fred and Lori and Pat. We welcome you into Brentwood Inspired Living family. We welcome you here with us. Uh, let me know that you're here with a comment because um, I see the numbers log in with us, but I don't necessarily know that you're here until you leave a comment in the chat. And then I see that you're here. So greetings, love, virtual hugs, uh, beautiful ones. Remember that we can energize um, this vibration of love 
by becoming the vibration of love. And so we can, we can do this by dropping into our, our heart space when we enter and um, center into the space where opinions and judgments, the old paradigm of dividing um, and conquering doesn't necessarily rule. And here you can discover a compassionate love. And from there, you can radiate out to everybody logging in, every name you see, every number you see, um, and beyond, to all the people you see on the Facebook Live and beyond. And um, yeah, so this is how we can radiate out into the world. Hello, Michael J. Allen. Nice to see you. Welcome in everybody. We want you to know that you are loved and valued, and we are so thankful that you are tuning in with us this morning. I am ecstatic to welcome back Dr. Fred Luskin with us today. He's a dear friend to me and to our spiritual community. He's always bringing us raw, real, heart-centered insight and wisdom, and we're always honored and blessed to share time with you, Fred. Thank you. Thank you for Zooming in with us this morning. We love you and appreciate you. Uh, there will not be a workshop today, but the Zoom link is always wide open for everyone to jump in there and connect um, if you should want to do that this afternoon. And I am thrilled to introduce a new musician and my friend, Lori Roldan. I worked with Lori recently on her article yes. at 110 Magazine. Oh, um, if you didn't see it, you can find that online at 110mag.com. And the article is Lori Sings a Song for You. And it's about her show that she created. It was playing at the Lesher Theater in Walnut Creek. And I just found out this morning that it is, she's got uh, more to come at yes. El Campanel um, on March 26th and 27th. So yes. you, we can see it again. So Yay. <laughs> You're yeah. wonderful, Amy. I'm so blessed to have you, uh, you know, write that wonderful article. It was a huge blessing for me and so many people, you know, have commented on how, how beautifully it was written. And I just really so much appreciate you. I can't even, I'm so glad that we're friends and that we've connected. You know, I am too. And it's such a blessing as a joy. Thank you for, you know, when people tell me their story, it's, it's trusting me to tell their story. Yes. So I'm grateful for that opportunity. And I'm so grateful that we met our paths crossed. And I said, hmm, would you be interested in singing for our spiritual community? I would love to. <laughs> I would said, love to. Yes. yes. So thank you for asking me. So grateful that you're here gifting us with your magical music. I'm, I'm excited. And since it's Lori's first time with us, I would like to read her bio so that you get to know her a little bit better. Lori is a professional singer and actor with a passion for inspirational music. She thrives on using music to inspire others and feels this is her unique purpose in life. Lori is a guest artist at many special events throughout the West and has appeared as a soloist with symphony orchestras throughout California and performed lead roles at a variety of Bay Area theaters, many listed there. Lori also loves to sing with her husband, Dan, all over Northern California. Um, Lori was featured in Lori Sings Gershwin, appearing on Fox KTV News Special. She loves to volunteer every year singing for the Hospice of the East Bay, Tree of Lights events through the, throughout the Bay Area, and she has also recorded a unique inspirational album, Even That, which was created to comfort those going through difficult times, as well as provide relaxing, soothing music that relieves stress. Lori says, singing is what heaven has called me to do, the task that the universe has set before me. Lori's proudest productions to date remain her three beautiful and talented daughters, Charlotte, Bridget, and Natalie. And we are so grateful that you are here with us. Thank you. Thank you, thank thank you, you for so saying, saying yes. And we have <laughs> Pat McCulley here. I'm sorry, Lori, did I catch you no. off. <laughs> I was going to introduce our wonderful Pat McCauley. She's here sharing our inspirational reading and um, creating this space for us to tune in to our prosperity and our abundant blessings. So thank you. Thank you, Pat, for tuning in and joining us today on the live. Thank you, Fred, Lori, and Pat for sharing your Sunday morning with us. We're so blessed to have you here creating this space. And thank you to each one of you, beloveds, for committing your time and energy to co-creating this heart space, dedicating your hearts to creating a kind, just loving global society and for tuning in and tuning within for committing your energy to activating love. Thank you, thank you. Let's see who's tuning in. Hi, Luinda. Oh, let me scroll back here. Michael says, you are love and you are surrounded by joy. I am here. Yes, yes, yes. Nancy says, good morning, everyone. You all look and sound great. Blessings to all. Luinda says, good morning, Amy, Fred, Pat, Lori, and everyone. Yay. Robin and Bonnie are here. Oh, 
Karen's here. Hi, Karen. She says, good morning. Paris is here. Yay. I am so grateful to see everybody uh, tuning in with us and um, love to connect this way. So a few quick reminders. If you or anyone you know would like life-affirming, love-affirming prayer, um, this is not the prayer where we're like, please, please, God, just this once. This is where we are really in the, the space um, it's an affirmation of what we know is already true. It's returning to wholeness, a return to the truth that already exists within us. Um, the truth that, that God knows that, that is us already. So please share your prayer request with us through our prayer and healing page. It's on our website. You go to the drop down menu under connect and you'll find um, that um, connect and you can submit your prayer right there. It's at BrentwoodILC.org. Uh, we love to pray over, over your prayers for you and your loved ones. So send them our way and mark your calendar for January 2nd. This is going to be our first in-person service in nearly two years. <laughs> All people are welcome. Invite everybody. We're really excited about this. And then the next upcoming concert will be January 15th. So we'll be together um, on the January 2nd and January 15th. We are in our new indoor location. So please check the website on our event page for the times and the address and all the good stuff there. All the details um, good morning, Paris. Paris says, greeting to my dear friends. Yes, indeed. So we have a special opportunity right now. If you head over to our website, check out the, it's the giving page or the ways to give page, and you'll find an amazing opportunity to support Brentwood Inspired Living Center. Carol Hansen Gray's package is there. It's Journey to an Open Heart. Carol is someone who has been teaching people how to free themselves from fear and how to love themselves uh, for over 30 years. And as a way to express her gratitude to us, the Brentwood Inspired Living Center, 40% of each sale will be. Um, go to us. It'll be a gift to us donated to Brentwood Inspired Living Center. So uh, check that out. This package will make a fabulous holiday gift for you or a friend. And if you purchase by December 24th, you'll be entered into a drawing for a $100 Amazon gift card. So it's a great uh, idea for last minute shoppers like me. <laughs> so check that out. Yay, yay. Good morning, Stephen. Nice to see you here. I see everybody logging in. Thank you for being here and participating in this co-creation of love. We're so grateful. So we are going to, um, we're going to open up with our mission statement, Bright Beings. So allow yourself to release tension. If you feel it in your jaw, your fists or forehead, sometimes you, we hold tension here. So release and just feel that vibrational flow and, and move into the space, your heart space and feel into our mission statement with me. We are an open, heart-centered spiritual community honoring the one presence within us. We welcome all to connect, grow, and expand in wisdom, compassion, and love. Thank you. Thank you for being here with us. So I'm going to hand the screen over to Lori this morning. She's got our Hi. community sing-along. Uh, so it's all yours, Lori. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you, Amy. And I chose... A couple of my favorite, favorite Christmas carols, because it is that time of year. And um, I love to sing about the angels and protection. And so I'm going to have you guys sing along. Now, you may not know all, you probably know a lot of the words. Um, so you just join in when you want, if you want, or you can close your eyes and just, you know, feel the music, but it's going to be a, a acapella, a couple songs that are meaningful to me. And I think you'll enjoy singing. So sing along with me and open up um, to the beautiful, beautiful words of these songs because, and, and I'm going to start with Hark the Herald Angels Sing because herald means announcement. This is an, an announcement of the newborn king. Hark the herald angels sing glory to the newborn king. Peace on earth and mercy mild, God and sinners reconciled. Joyful all ye nations rise, join the triumph of the skies. With angelic hosts proclaim, Christ is born in Bethlehem. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to 
the newborn King. Hail the heaven-born Prince of Peace. Hail the Son of Righteousness. Light and life to all he brings, risen with healing in his wings. Mild he lays his glories by, born that men no more may die, born to raise the sons of earth, born to give a second birth. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn king. The Herod angels are singing and they sing on high. Angels we have heard on high. Sing along. Angels we have heard on high, sweetly singing o'er the plains and the mountains in reply, echoing their joyous strains. Gloria in excelsis Deo. Gloria in excelsis Deo. Shepherds, why this jubilee? Why your joyous strains prolong? What the gladsome tidings be, which inspire your heavenly song? Sing along. Gloria in excelsis Deo. Gloria in excelsis Deo. Hope you enjoyed that. A couple opening songs about the angels singing oh. for the newborn king. That was beautiful, Lori. Yes, you know, singing connects us to the heart. And so did you really feel that everybody? What beautiful songs to um, open us up with today as we are in the fourth week of Advent, the journey to Christmas, uh, the journey to the full revelation of Christ as God and God revealed in man. And we can remember, we can remember that. And that's what this whole time of Advent is about. And it aligns with our themes. With God, all things are possible. All things are possible, yes. possibilities, infinite yes. possibilities, you know, knowing that God is active within us now, always ever present, never absent. And so as we are <clears throat> looking forward to the, the birth of Christ, the celebration of Christmas, uh, we can anticipate the new possibilities being born within each one of us as well. So thank you. Thank you, Lori, for opening up the space for us this morning. That was beautiful. So I'm going to hand the screen over to Pat now. It's all yours for an inspirational reading this morning. Thanks, Pat. Oh, you're still muted. You're still on mute. I muted because I was singing. <laughs> and I didn't want everybody else to hear. <laughs> Welcome everyone. The inspirational readings this month have been about the subject of possibilities. I'm so glad you chose to be here with us today because you had many possibilities. The reading this morning is an adaptation from the article, Give Yourself Permission, Stay Open to Possibilities by Julie Baldwin, an author of The Creative Heroine's Path and a creative mentor, speaker, and workshop leader. The other day, I started thinking about possibilities. And when I give myself permission to explore them, and when I shut them down, some of my best experiences of my life began with giving myself permission. Years ago, 
I got a scholarship to a creative writing class in Tuscany. I got the news less than a month before the class began and I didn't have a passport. The normal time frame for getting a new passport was six to eight weeks, but nothing was gonna stop me from going. In that state of mind, I saw obstacles as challenges that I would meet. I found a way to get the passport process expedited. But at the time, it first appeared to be an insurmountable obstacle. What if I had given up? I get a hollow feeling in the center of my chest just thinking about it. No writing at a desk in front of an open window overlooking the Tuscan hills. No fresh Italian food and local wine at the long wooden table surrounded by candlelight and good conversation. Your perspective makes or breaks your experiences and giving yourself permission to explore possibilities is your power perspective. Only you can give yourself permission to go for possibilities you want to have. If I had given up on Tuscany, essentially, I would have given my power away to a bureaucratic process. I like to say that I bravely sailed through life, opening to possibilities and giving myself permission for everything I want to create, but I don't, especially in the area of self-care. I ended up burnt out and sick in my corporate job because I didn't set boundaries around my time outside of work hours. I didn't give myself permission to say no. It's a stark contrast, flying away to Italy versus sobbing in my doctor's office. I've learned some hard lessons about giving away my power. Do you sometimes shut yourself down from having the possibilities that you want? When do you tell yourself that you can't do something because it's selfish or not important or too difficult? How do you know whether you're making the right decision? This is what I tell my creative clients. Follow the energy. When you respond to an idea with lightness and excitement, that's a clue you're on the right path. It doesn't mean you won't have down days or experience difficulties, but when your heart soars, follow it. You get to give yourself permission to create the possibilities in life that you truly want. And thank you, Julie Baldwin. Oh, are we back? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I never run Zoom and wear hats and read texts and that was beautiful. That was wonderful. I love I love what she said. The power perspective, right? So uh, opening up and seeing the possibilities is a power perspective. I'm going to remember that one. That was that was good. Thank you, Pat. Thank you for that. Thank you for finding that for us. That was definitely inspirational and fit our theme so perfectly. Okay, I'm going to hand the screen back to you, Lori, for okay. some more. Glorious music yes. this morning. Thank you. Thank you. I, you know, I love the theme and I think it's perfect for the fourth week of Advent actually, because, and I was choosing the songs when I was thinking about the songs. Um, I did this song at the first week of Advent. Um, and I think it's a great, this, this song is called a little bit of heaven everywhere by Francesca Battistelli. Um, I like what you said to Pat about perspective, because this song talks about the feeling of Christmas. There's a little bit of heaven everywhere. We have that giving uh, theme. It's in our minds. It's in our hearts this time of year. And if we could just have that all the time, you know, that kind of perspective of life, perspective of giving, perspective of having a little bit of heaven everywhere. So I want to share this song that I love. It's a new one for me, actually. Um, and uh, I just, excuse me one second, I got to get out of something here. <laughs> Hope I'm back. Okay, hopefully you'll enjoy the words to this and um, here we go. I hear the bells, they're ringing loud and clear. 
you can't help but love this time of year. It's Christmas time, there's something in the air. There's a little bit of heaven everywhere. Somehow there's a little more of love Cause maybe there's a little less of us Or maybe we're just slightly more aware There's a little bit of heaven everywhere It's the smile on a man who has finally found hope it's the tears of a mother whose child has come home. It's the joy that we feel and the love that we share. There's a little bit of heaven everywhere. There's a little bit of heaven everywhere. It's funny how it takes a holiday to show us how the world could truly change if we all took the time to really care there'd be a little bit of heaven everywhere it's the grace that we show to a world that we talk it's giving our lives knowing they're not our own it's the joy that we feel and the love that we share there's a little bit of heaven everywhere there's a little bit of heaven everywhere angels we have heard on high sweetly singing o'er the plains and the mountains in reply echoing their joyous strains hallelujah hallelujah it's the joy that we feel and the love that we share there's a little bit of heaven everywhere there's a little bit of heaven everywhere. There's a little bit of heaven everywhere. Angels we have heard on high, sweetly singing o'er the plains. Hallelujah. Oh, that was so beautiful, Lori. Thank you. A little bit of heaven everywhere. Yes, that's a power perspective. <laughs> yes, yes, definitely. Thank you. Thank you. Lots of uh, love coming to you on, on the chat here. So thank you for being with us. Such a thank joy. You. Thank you. Okay, Pat, it's time for our blessing of abundance. So I'm going to hand the screen over to you this morning for that. Thank you so much. Oh, you're still muted. It was all that singing you were. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to break in at any time. <laughs> I invite you to join me now for our prayer of plentitude on this glorious fourth Sunday of Advent. Advent is a season of hope, renewal, and change. Let us go within, immersing ourselves in the one presence, releasing all obstacles on our path, and together light the candle of joy in anticipation of the rebirth of the light of spirit within us. Now take a deep breath, breathing in love and light, and hold it gently. Now release it slowly as you connect through your heart with our message of prosperity. We come together today, opening our hearts and minds to the one spirit, the light, 
infinite mind, knowing that there is only one power and one life, and that is the life of spirit. We affirm that we are one with spirit, and there is no one, nothing that is separate from this oneness. We are one with that infinite mind that has created all of us. We know that the divine qualities of peace, of power, of plenty, of wisdom are already within each of us. And we embrace those qualities now. We go forth in the truth of who and what we are, saying yes to our prosperity, our harmony, our health, our order, and our love. And with the greatest gratitude, we accept this transformation of consciousness for ourselves and our community. We know that it is done and we give thanks. Now we release, we let go and let spirit do its perfect work. We trust the universe to provide for us. It is done. And so it is. And now, again, we want to thank all of those who generously contributed gifts and party for the Wallam House and the women and children there and to many who donated to our local loaves and fishes. The contributions were delivered last Wednesday for many of those in our area who are out in the rain and cold this winter. The gifts were including well over 250 pairs of socks and truckloads of coats, sweaters, blankets, gloves, rain gear, and more. And a very special thanks to Nancy Pimentel, who organized and orchestrated the collections and delivery of these gifts. Thank you, Nancy. Remember, planning ahead for January 2022, we will gather at the Antioch Community Center on January 2nd at 10 a.m. for our first in-person BILC service in almost two years. We will be together in person on the first Sunday of each month. And the rest of the Sundays each month, continuing on Facebook Live. The in-person service will also be taped and available on our website the next day. Also, starting January 2022, we will have our community circle and music on the third Saturday in January. Please call Jan if you need a ride or if you're willing to offer a ride for either of those in-person events. We hope to see all of you together again in person in the new year. Blessings and have a wonderful week. Thank you, Pat, for bringing us into that space of abundance and all those great reminders. We appreciate you so much. Okay, Lori, I'm handing it over Hi. to you for our last song this morning. Back. Yeah, great. you're back. I'm back. For yes, that. I love, you know, this is my passion, of course, to sing. And, and uh, like I said, I was, um, you know, preparing the, the music for today and what I would sing. And um, there's just so many songs because I just have so many favorites. But I feel that this was a good one um, because talking about the possibilities, I think this really actually goes, especially right now in the fourth week of Advent, where um, we realize that, you know, God uses us and he uses all of us if we will connect to our gifts. And like we, I talked with you about this, Amy, you know, if we follow our, our hearts and know, you know, our true gifts that God gives all of us, um, we need to listen to him. And I really believe this song was a just a good choice for today. It's called Breath of Heaven. I've sung it when I was pregnant with my twins. It's about Mary carrying Jesus. And she said yes to God. 
And it was hard, but she said yes. And she made herself available. And I just feel like we all need to do that. And um, I love the, the song because it talks about that breath which God gives us. And so I'm gonna share Breath of Heaven. And it's Mary, alone and afraid. I have traveled many moonless nights, cold and weary, with a baby inside. And I wonder what I've done. Holy And chosen me now to carry your son. I am waiting in a silent prayer. I am frightened. By the load I bear in a world as cold as stone, must I walk this path alone? Be with me now. Be
Thank you so much, Lori. That yes. was so beautiful. Was by Amy Grant. Thank you for Thank you. for closing us up with that beauty. And so, Lori, yeah. what is the best way for people to find you and your music if they want to? Yes. Thank find you. you. I am at uh, a voice to comfort.com or lauriroldan.com. Okay. And you can find all the information on my upcoming shows and, and I have you know information on my my music on there. So thank yeah. you. And the El Campanelle in March. So wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lori. Thank you, Pat, for activating this space with enormous soul and splendor. We're so grateful uh, for your sweet essence and your joyful heart song that you shared with us this morning. So thank you. Thank I will you so see you on inviting. this side. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Right. We'll see you in February, Bye. Lori. <laughs> thank you. Yes, I'll see you in February. All right. Okay. Bye, everybody. Wonderful. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Um, yes, that was beautiful. Okay. Greetings, wonderful people. Here we are. It's always a joy to have you with us, Fred. Fred and I have had some fun opportunities lately to share some Starbucks meetings, and I'm always so grateful um, when the stars align. And, and thank you for being here and fitting uh, our, our service into your busy, busy schedule. So I am going to uh, read Fred's bio real quick. And for those of you who, who may not know Fred yet, and then I'll pray us in real quick and then hand the screen right over to Fred for our message this morning. Frederick Luskin, PhD, is the author of the best-selling Forgive for Good and Forgive for Love and one of the world's leading researchers and teachers on the subject of forgiveness. He is the director of the Stanford Forgiveness Projects, a series of research projects that have validated his forgiveness methods. He is a lecturer in wellness at the Stanford University School of Medicine and department chair of clinical psychology at the Institute of Transpersonal Psychology. I will add to this highly credentialed bio that Fred is a genuine heart-centered being of kindness and compassion, someone truly committed to being a person open to life, teacher and student. And uh, we appreciate your essence, Fred. Thank you for being here. I invite everyone to just tune in and open up to prayer right now, make ourselves available um, to this space, to this message. We're so grateful and so thankful uh, to be here today, to be the light in this world, to partner with our higher Holy Spirit self. We come together knowing that we are one in the spirit, one when, with the ineffable brilliance of source energy. We celebrate the divinity that we are. We express deep gratitude for our time together now, and we bless our dear friend, Fred Luskin, and we open our hearts and our minds and our souls to receive the message he has for us today. I release this word in love, for love, as love, and for the good of all. And so it is. Amen. Ashe. Namaste, everybody. It's all yours, Fred. Thank you for being with us. We appreciate you. <laughs> Thank you, Amy. It's, um, it's, it's nice to see you again. I visited a few weeks ago with Amy in um, San Diego as I have a good friend who also lives in Escondido. <laughs> and so we met at Starbucks a couple times to, to, to connect. Um, you know, I, was, I, I was thinking of, um, since it's around Christmas time, um, talking a little bit about, of course, the, the message of Jesus. But, but what makes that so hard is, is the message of Jesus is, is very different than what people hear and behave. And, and I, I, I looked up, I tried to look up the famous Gandhi quote where, you know, they kind of asked him, like, you know, what do you think of Christians? or Christianity. And he said at some level about Christians, um, I don't know, I'll let you know if I ever meet one. And um, actually, when I looked it up, the real quote is worse than that. Um, that he was in India, and was a tremendous follower of Jesus. I mean, he he viewed the Bible as his kind of second go-to source after the Bhagavad Gita. 
and um, decided one day to go to a church in India and was turned away that they, they wouldn't give him admission because he was dark skinned and he was not upper class. That the church was reserved for white people and rich people. And, um, you know, it also, it also reminds me of a, a very famous comedy routine that Lenny Bruce, um, the American kind of cynic, um, and whatever in the 50s and 60s in the United States, one of his famous comedy routines is of Jesus coming to back to America and, and going to the Vatican and, and shouting at them, that's not me. You don't, you don't got this right at all. I don't know who you're talking about, but it ain't me. And they had, you know, Lenny Bruce is like waving his hands and Jesus trying to get them to pay attention. They're not, you know, they're carrying on their, their robes and their routines and their order. And um, you know, from, I mean, if you just read of his life, um, that wasn't him at all. And, and I, don't, I, I think the problem between like Jesus and why it's so easy to, to give some Christians a, a difficulty, and you can do that with any religion, is how hard it is to really handle the humility of great spiritual teachers. Like what, what, what they're trying to teach us, it seems like more than anything is to be humble and to be um, like when you use the words, let it go. I think, I think what they want you to let go is your ego, is your sense of specialness, your sense of entitlement, your, spent, your sense of um, importance. And, and that's what makes such a difference between identifying as a Christian often or anything for an ego boost and the ego transcendence that's required to actually follow any of these people. It's really hard. The other piece that makes, I think, and, and I'm, I'm not picking on Christianity at all, that makes being a Christian so hard is, um, like I think part of the, 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 the trip is like Jesus had a cross to carry. And most of us don't want ours. Like, I, I, I'm not a, I don't know what to think. I'm kind of agnostic as, as, as these things that tell you to, to wish for prosperity. Um, I'm not sure that's what Jesus would have wished for. Um, he had nothing. Gandhi had nothing. The, the spiritual savants had very, very little. St. Francis had nothing. Um, I think it's, uh, and I'm not arguing for poverty, but um, there's a, this is stuff is so hard to, to recognize that th these deep spiritual teachers are saying, get over yourself. And, and we don't want to get over ourselves. And, and there's a real conflict there. And I remember telling a friend of mine, and this is just really hard stuff. I remember telling a friend of mine who was an Episcopal priest, and I do have a number of friends who were ministers and priests, so it, it's not, it's not against, there's nothing against that at all. Um, but he had had a very difficult like couple of years and um, like he didn't, he didn't want the fact that if he actually became Christian, that there was probably going to be a cross for him to carry too. That, that I, I can't believe that just the master of the faith is the only one. I, I can't buy that. And, and, and I'm not sure that we can just tease out the slightly pretty parts of this that we like because it makes us feel good and recognize the sacrifice and humbling and unbelievable gentleness with which that human being handled it.
but he was this friend of mine was really resisting and was like you know it shouldn't happen to me i'm a minister of god and whatever and 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 i, m- I remember just i mean because i'm not particularly a christian or anything i'm not opposed to any of these but i remember telling him at some level that well like you have a deep faith in this man who suffered mercilessly and and um, what what would make you think that like that that wouldn't some of that wouldn't be asked of you to show how you do with that like as a like that's that that's the past but but i don't think it's just christians um i think it's it's the human race you can't you can't move six inches without seeing suffering. And so do we go in the midst of that suffering and just wish for our own prosperity and well-being? Or do we walk in the midst of that suffering and say, what can I help? And, and I think these great spiritual teachers would be closer to the what can I do to help? Um, you know, Gandhi had nothing. I mean, you think about that. And Martin Luther King, um, I mean, these remarkable human beings um, were not attracted to spiritual gain, I mean, to material gain. They they were too busy helping and, and offering and taking their own struggles, their own difficulties and, and, and I'm going to say carrying their cross with dignity and, and some degree of grace. It does appear to me, um, again, that people like Jesus and, you know, you read about the death of Mahab- Mahandas Gandhi, that when he was shot, what he remembered to do was pranam like this to the person who shot him and say the word Ram, the name of God. That's how Gandhi died. I mean, just think about that. I mean, it's it's the exact same thing as Jesus did with um, forgive them, they know not what they do. It's the exact same thing. But think of the training and practice in egolessness that had to precede that. How many decisions were made? How many hundreds or thousands of decisions daily were made to be able to be brutalized unfairly and respond with kindness and well wishes? So unfortunately, I think if if we want to be in that path and we want to claim any of these people as our teacher, we have to start practicing some of these things so that when we have our own real cross, we have practice behind it to deal with it in, in an appropriate manner. And, and, and you know, I, it's so much harder than we want to believe and it. it's not little trite sayings and it's deep in a work. And, and again, the hardest part of it is the humility. It's not about being successful. I mean, it's not, enough, it's not about not being successful. It's, it's learning to be less attached to whether you're successful or not, or in what definition. But it's, um, you know, the, the, the Christian term might be humility, the closer scientific term might be ego transcendence. The, you know, more vernacular might be just get over yourself. But that those things have to be practiced. Otherwise, when, and I'm not, that's way out of my pay grade to understand, like being shot or being crucified and wishing people well, but we can practice on the freeway. You know, I mean, you can practice on the Whole Foods line. There's hundreds of places to practice um, doing this and Ram or whatever it is, wishing people well. But if we don't do that, and, and this was Gandhi's point, 
we're not Christians. That, that was the point. If you don't do that, then there's, there's no point in calling yourself that. And I think that's, that's what makes this so hard. The data is that simply calling ourselves from a religion doesn't necessarily mean that we're going to be in any way better people. I mean, they have, they have interesting research where they'll bring people who identify as religious into a room and they'll have a confederate walk out and drop a $20 bill. And they want to see how many supposed religious people pick up the $20 bill because they don't know this cameras all over the place. And the whole point of the, the study is how many people pick up the money and don't say anything. And saying you're religious doesn't contribute to any honesty in that way. And they've seen it in other things. But people who say they're religious or don't say they're religious, but meditate and pray, like inner work, attend services regularly, they actually do pick up the $20 bill a little less. You know? But you have to live it. It's not just, here I am, world, I'm a whatever. And, and it, the, the science like that is like fascinating about what it takes for us to get the inner space where we can do some of these things. And it, it's called humility. It starts there. I, when I was doing a lot of forgiveness talking, I remember um, you know, saying that the heart of forgiveness is recognizing you're not the center of the universe. Like that's the heart of it. Because unforgiveness implies that you're the center of the universe. So you could focus on your suffering for 20 years and ignore the suffering like six feet away because you're so identified with the suffering that you've had. So I remember saying to a group of like a couple hundred people in an auditorium, something about, you know, we're not the center of the universe. So some guy raises his hand and said, yeah, you know, I just I just heard a joke about that, that like the, the, the joke is scientists have actually just discovered where the actual center of the universe is. And, you know, there's millions of people who's going to be pissed because it's not them. And um, this is the crux of the difficulty of the real spiritual path. Is that as it goes on, you recognize it's about a question of self-absorption. Like, what am I seeing? Am I seeing what Jesus saw? And the answer is no. But none of us is seeing what Jesus saw, which is just probably undifferentiated love. We're not seeing that. We're seeing it through the lens of self. And so we distort everything through that lens of self, everything. There's some recent science looking at functional MRI imaging that has suggested, you can't prove any of this, that until we're able to see with compassion, at least, we distort things. We distort other people. We get things wrong all the time because our minds are so impure and our emotions are so impure because they're so self-focused. But the minute you touch compassion, all of a sudden you start to see, see people more clearly. Until then, it's dishonest because it's so self-protective and so self-referential that we don't even see things. So this is what Jesus came to do is to help us, to guide us, to model for us, not putting ourselves at the center of the universe. He, I mean, he and the, the other, you know, master teachers, um, you know, they, they lived it in extremis, like through horrible things. Um, you know, our question is, can we live it if we're late and not be nasty? Or if somebody else is late, you know, can we live that? Or if somebody makes a mistake, can we like, 
stay in compassion and you know be like jesus and say forgive them they don't know what they're doing um but you have to practice it is that's that's the hardest piece you have to practice 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 because all day long you're practicing something and most of the time we're just practicing egotism so you have to practice, 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 practice. And, you know, again, I have a friend or a long ago friend. It was really a funny thing where he told me he remembers all when he was young, growing up in a probably a Southern, you know, Baptist kind of community where Southern and Baptist, I'm not putting them together, but where people would tell him, well, what would Jesus do? as if that was to model his behavior. He says, how the hell do I know what Jesus would do? I can barely, you know. So he wrote a book called, What Would the Godfather Do? Because <laughs> yeah, at least he could understand that, you know. But if they cut me off, I'd kill him. <laughs> if they didn't do what I want, I'd kill him. <laughs> so he could at least write something that his consciousness could relate to. Like, you know, what would the Godfather do? But, but I think the, the question uh, for all of us around Christmas is what do we want to practice? Like not to, what do we want to get, which is my problem with those prosperity things. But that, that, I don't think that's the spirit of the, of the spirit. It's what do we want to give? I, I, don't, I just, I really don't, I really don't see that. The ego wants to get and the spirit wants to give. And even Maslow pointed that out, that there are two different kinds of needs. One of the deficit needs and the meta needs. The deficit needs is what do I need more of? The meta needs are what do I need to give away? And so the focus on what can I get is to me a very shallow form of spiritual anything. It's not wrong, it's just, but Jesus in that life show us the deepest form of spirituality, like just mind-bogglingly complex and complete and just the, the unbelievable humility to do what he believes his God wanted him to do, including being mercilessly killed and then that occurring and he's blessing people. I mean, that's, again, that's out of any of our pay grades. But just to look at that, you know, and, and, and ask ourselves, well, what is it from here to there, which could be a million miles, what do we want to practice? What do we want to practice? What, how do we want to grow? And, and how do we want to become, I'm going to say, a quarter of an inch closer to that? I mean, because that's, that's what you get. You know, you get like a, a quarter of an inch at a time, but it comes from practice. And it comes from intention and it comes from practice. But where I think somebody like the life of Jesus is so wonderful is it, it's a model of successful practice. You know, it's like completely and 100% successful practice. Anyway, I thank you all for um, putting me on your calendar. Um, it is weird, like not being, seeing anybody. It's a strange thing. Um, I, I will say this Zoom stuff is weird, but um, I hope you all have a lovely holiday time and I thank you for your time and attention. Oh, thank you, Fred. Yes, it is weird. However, it does make this possible with me in South Carolina and you in <laughs> Northern California. What's that? I'm grateful. I said it makes it possible. Zoom is weird, and yet it makes this possible to where you're so far, we're so far away and we can be together. So that part I am grateful for. <laughs> it does, it does, it does. No question. Uh -huh. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you for Zooming with us. I know you are in a tight schedule this morning. There was a couple of comments. I just wanted to pop over here and check in with everybody um, before Fred logs off here. Lewinda said, I love what you said, Fred, that when we see others with compassion, we see them more clearly. Yes. Um, uh, I found that to be a remarkable reminder. Yeah, it's true, right? You really see through a different lens. 
Uh, Paris says, everything in life is how you look at it. I find money on the streets while walking my dog, mostly pennies and loose change. I always think of it as my mother who transitioned, sending me a connection from the other side. Just yesterday, I found a dollar bill. I felt not one iota of guilt or thought of it as stealing. I'd likely feel the same if it was 20. Guess I wouldn't pass the study. <laughs> Thank you, Paris, for your heart. Jan says, I keep thinking about our theme possibility. And for me, hearing Fred clarify the possibility of humility and my, whoops, and my constant choice. Yeah, thank you, Jan. Jean says, Fred, is it possible that some are genetically programmed with the ability to empathize while others have learned it if they choose? Of course. There you go. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we love Fred. <laughs> <laughs> we all start in different places with different things. Mm -hmm. Amy, I do got to go. I know you do. We love you. We appreciate you. Thank you for tuning oh. in with us this morning. We will see you again soon in a few months, I think. I don't remember, but but um, I know you're back with us next year. <laughs> we love Fred. We got to love him. He is just wonderful. Um, I still want to go through the rest of the comments. Um, John appreciates the holiday reminder. What can I give? Right. Michael J. Allen says, everything you shared lands on my heart. Thank you, Fred. He's hearing that through the, through the ethers here. Yeah. What a, what a great, uh, what a great message to, to hear before, before Christmas. What would Jesus do? <laughs> really was the message, right? Uh, blessed be beautiful people. You know, it is the fourth Sunday in Advent. And um, so since since Fred logged off, I'll just share a quick thought here. You know, traditionally Advent is thought of as the journey toward Christmas Day, the celebration of the actual physical birth of Christ uh, from a traditional uh, Christian perspective. But from a metaphysical lens, Advent is the spiritual journey that we are on toward uh, the birth of the Christ presence within ourselves. And so I was thinking of this journey, I, I kind of ruminate on thoughts for a while, um, often, especially when I'm writing a column. And, and this month, December, I titled my column in the 110 magazine, Joy to the World. I was really thinking about joy on this journey in consciousness. And A Course in Miracles says that joy is the inevitable result of gentleness. And Fred mentioned this, so it got me thinking about gentleness, because he said that the sages of the ages... Um, handle their cross to bear with an un unbelievable gentleness was what he said. And uh, so it, 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 it struck that in, in my, that thought in me about gentleness, um, that joy is the inevitable result of gentleness. And so gentleness means that um, fear is now impossible because a gentle heart is not judging. It's, it's in this compassionate lens, you know, so um, are we seeing what Jesus saw through the lens of compassion and, and through that lens of compassion, that's really where infinite possibilities, that powerful perspective comes. And so oftentimes, you know, we think of joy sort of as this outward exuberance, which it can be joy um, can be that, but it isn't necessarily just that joy is about the connection that we have with God, with source energy, with divine essence which results in the gentleness, you know, that gratefulness, um, being present, just being fully present. And when we let go um, of all that other judgment and, and heaviness and doing, and, and we just allow ourselves to experience being, um, maybe Fred would call that humility, we are able to truly experience the joy within us, that, that connection to our source. Uh, so I look at it as joy, uh, joy to the world is when we're speaking life into any situation, when you speak light into darkness, so to speak, when you understand the good news of great joy is the Christ presence within you here and now, and in the midst of any storm, like, like Fred mentioned, I had written it down. Um, when you're walking in the midst of the storms of suffering, asking, what can I do? What is mine to do? You know, joy can look boisterous and gleeful, or it can be quiet and tranquil. It is knowing that you are held and that you are always in the divine flow. And that is part of this Advent journey. So happy Advent, everybody. Merry Christmas to you. Joy to the world. I am so grateful to be together um, with, with all of you. 
um, joining in with us. I still see you here. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, what can I give? That is a great holiday reminder, John. So thank you for this sensational morning. If you feel refreshed, restored, realigned, revitalized, uh, and grateful for the Brentwood Inspired Living community, please vi consider visiting our uh, giving page on our website, brentwoodilc.org. Uh, we, we decide how we create flow in our lives. So, so Fred also touched on this, you know, about giving. And so, it, so the giving and receiving is, is, is a, it's a dance and it's, it's a, an exchange of energy. So uh, we get to choose um, what we appreciate and what we appreciate, appreciate. So uh, we can become conscious givers and, and ask, what would Jesus do? What is mine to do more? So what is mine to do in this moment? So we create our lives by our, our energetic exchanges. And, and so um, we are 100% supported by your generous contributions. And we're so grateful, deeply grateful for the love that pours into us each month to enable us reaching far and wide and bringing joy to the world. So thank you. Thank you. We are going to close with our prayer of divine awakening. Check your mailboxes. You will have a little gift coming in the mail. If we don't have your address, please uh, sign up on our website under our membership section. It's under connect. And that way we can get your address and we can send um, these gifts to you in the mail that we so often do. So I'm going to change the screen right now and put up our prayer of divine awakening so that you can speak this. So we, you can make this a declaration for, for your life um, and speak this out loud right now. And so let me share my screen and pull this, um, pull this up. Oh, what's going on? Share. Sorry. There we go. It should be on the screen. Let me, <laughs> I like to check the phone. I think it's there. Um, thank you, Luinda, for being here. Okay. The prayer of divine awakening. It's a new day, a beautiful day, a new beginning. I embrace this day with new eyes and open heart and expansive mind. I choose my vibrational frequency deliberately and consciously, harmonizing with life's events. I am receptive to source energy, divine guidance and wisdom available to me at all times. I commit to serve unconditional love fully and completely. I move forward in a state of appreciation, an extension of the one magnificent power and presence. I am sovereign, whole, and free, claiming dominion over my life as I go in peace and awaken to my divinity. And so it is. So it is, beloveds. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Uh, thank you for joining in, tuning in. Uh, the link is open if you should want to jump on to the, um, to the uh, workshop link. Uh, it's there for connection. So if you want to connect, jump on there. I am heading to a parade right now, our Christmas parade. I love you all dearly. Shine on divine beings of brilliance. Merry, Merry Christmas.